I was talking to Jan about the schedule. It comes out, I mean, you want it really the equivalent of seven weeks. And does that give you enough time, seven weeks? And that includes practice time. That's not, and that's not what I have here. Yeah, I, we talked about having him present the first week of May. Yeah, that's kind of what I It's too much time. The number one thing for the presence of mind, especially of the staff, being very organized and having some planning time before anything starts to lay everything out, I want to be um, including a week-by-week week schedule and a really clear statement of what's due when. Okay, so you and I need to lay this timeline out differently. Project-based learning, all most of the heavy lifting for the teachers goes on beforehand. So they need to know exactly what that assessment looks like at the end. They need to know the steps and the scaffolds that are going to get the kids there. They have to have the products for the kids. It really helps to think of projects in the sense that you're going to plan backwards. So you're going to think about what you want the outcomes to be, and you're going to plan backwards by thinking about how much do your students know, what have you taught them before, what do you think their mastery level is of certain kinds of information. What we need to do today is really formalize our ideas about what watersheds are and what this project is about. One of the students in that particular class, the first time I ever mentioned that we were going to do this watershed project, he said, he said, where's the shed? It ranges from that level to kids that have done a watershed study before, and they're quite informed and quite savvy about what's involved. And that's one of the big challenges of teaching here. And you've got some topographic maps um, in front of you on your table. Many of you are not really accustomed to using topographic maps. So I want to just kind of watch you as you try to find where we are on this map and where our watershed might be. Okay. Well, I guess the big watershed would be around here, right? Trace the line. But then we're also in this little, this little one over here. Sometimes you might find that you have to stop for 15 minutes and say, okay, here's five important vocabulary words that you may not know. Here are the definitions. This will, these words will help you now proceed yeah. to the next step of the project. What's the name for the squiggly lines on a topographic map? A lake. <laughs> They're called contour lines. Contour lines. You're trying to balance out how much information they need to know to do the project, how much information are they going to learn within the context of the project. It's a constant process of mapping it out, looking back at your map to see if it still works, and constantly revisiting that with students particularly to see where they are. If you're having any trouble locating the point of reference, let me know and I'm going to come over and help orient you. Is this it? Yes, that is the school. That's why they're